bulldozer. This bulldozer is driving to the work site. It has tracks instead of wheels for driving across obstacles. And it has a blade for moving things out of the way. Let's use the bulldozer to move sand into a big pile. And we can put it in reverse to get some more sand. Bulldozers are very strong tractors. This one has 850 horsepower and weighs a quarter million pounds. So never let one run over your foot. All right, here it comes with a second load of sand. There, that should be enough for our job. Now that the bulldozer's done, we could send it on its way. Thanks to our bulldozer's tracks, steep hills are no problem for it. Thanks for helping us, bulldozer. Here comes a hauler. Our hauler has big wheels so it can go over tough obstacles. A hauler has a dump body that can carry heavy loads and dump them out when needed. Let's drive it to the work site. We'll park the hauler here and then get another tractor to fill it up. An excavator. Just like our bulldozer, the excavator has tracks instead of wheels. The excavator has a boom and arm with a bucket on the end for digging. Let's use the excavator to fill up our hauler. The teeth on the bucket are there to help it break up hard bits of soil. And the operator of the excavator uses levers inside the cap to move the boom, arm, and bucket. Let's take a look from inside the cap to see what the operator sees. As you can see, when the arm swings to the side, the cap turns too, so the operator can keep the bucket in view at all times. It looks like this might take a while to fill up. Luckily, a flatbed truck is on its way to help. And the trailer is carrying a JCV loader backhoe. Our flatbed hauler is strong enough to tow 96,000 pounds in cargo. How is it able to tow so much? Well, let's look under the hood. And that's where the engine is, with 425 horsepower. Now we see how the flatbed truck can tow so much. Let's lower the ramps from the trailer so we can get to our tractor. And we need to remove one of the guards that kept the tractor in place. All right, now let's back it off the trailer. With its job complete, our flatbed truck can leave the work site. This tractor has a backhoe that can slide left and right. And the backhoe has a bucket on the end, just like the excavator does. On the front of the tractor is a loader bucket attached to a loader bucket arm. And the tractor uses these to scoop large amounts of material. With our excavator and JCB tractor working together, we'll get this hauler filled in no time. Just look how much sand the loader bucket carries in one scoop. One more load from the excavator, and our hauler will be ready to move to the next work site. There, it looks like our hauler is full. Now the hauler can do its job, which is to transport all this material to where it's needed. As you can see, it has no problems traveling in tough terrain. It looks like there's a problem down at the Old Town Road. But thankfully, our hauler is here to help fix it. Let's line our hauler up with the hole, and then our hauler can dump the sand. Now that our hauler completed its job, it can head back home. Cement Truck A cement truck has a large mixing tank full of cement. And the mixing tank can turn to mix the cement and keep it from drying out. Our cement truck is going to add cement over the hole. Cement trucks have discharging chutes that help guide the cement to where it's supposed to go. It's almost like a hose for cement. One more piece and we'll be ready to pour our cement. Real cement is made with limestone, shells, and many other ingredients. And once the cement dries, it becomes hard, like in sidewalks. It looks like we have enough cement to cover the hole now. The hole isn't completely fixed, but at least it's patched up until it can be paved by the Department of Transportation. Now let's see what's going on at another work site. I need another pallet! 
It looks like our worker needs another pallet of cinder blocks. But he's all the way up here, and the cinder blocks are all the way down here. Maybe this crane truck can help us. A crane truck has a long boom that helps it reach things that are way up high. And that should be just what we need. A crane truck has extendable outriggers. These help it stay balanced even when the boom is fully extended. The crane truck has a separate cab for the operator of the boom. And this cab can rotate independently of the truck. Using this wheel, we can lower the hook. There we go, now we can secure the pallet to the hook. Changing directions of the wheel will make the hook rise. The boom has a lift cylinder that can increase the angle of the boom. And the boom is telescoping too, which means it can extend out even further. It looks like we've got the pallet up high enough. Now the operator can rotate the cab to line the pallet up with where they want to put it down. There, that looks like a good spot. And then we could just lower the hook to unhook it from the pallet. Now to lower the boom, first the operator rotates the cab back. Then they can retract the telescoping arm. And once that's done, they can lower the angle of the boom. Now we need to fold the outriggers back in. First we can get the left side, followed by the right side. Then we can tighten up the hook so it doesn't drag along the road. And now our crane truck has completed its task. Now let's visit a farm. Double wheeled tractor. This tractor has large wheels and a hitch to attach various things. Like this sewing trailer. A sewing trailer can prepare the soil for planting and it can plant the seeds. Let's attach it to our double wheeled tractor. Now that it's attached and ready, we can unfold our sewer. It has a foldable step ladder that lets us walk up and add the seeds. Today we're gonna be planting some grains. Grains are used in breads and cereals. The tractor can tow the sower so the sower can plant the seeds. Wow, look at all those seeds in the soil. Doing this all by hand would be so hard. That's why tractors are a big help to farmers. They let farmers do more work in less time. It looks like we've done a great job planting our crop. Now while we wait for it to become ready for harvest, let's go check another work site. Tree Harvester Tree harvesters can cut down trees for wood. It looks like this tree is ready for harvesting. Our tree harvester gets its boom into position. And then we can open the sawing unit to grip it onto the tree. The sawing unit then cuts the tree at the base. Then we can retract the saw and then slide the trunk along the rollers for a better grip. Our harvester is now ready to deposit the new tree trunk. It brings the trunk to our lumber work site. Now the wood is ready to be loaded. And for that, we'll use our timber truck. And it has its own built-in crane for grabbing the wood. We'll use this attachment to allow it to grab the trunks. To make it easier to load the wood, we'll lower one of the gates on the truck bed. Just like the boom on our crane truck, this boom telescopes as well. Now we can load the wood that our harvester collected. This truck has an engine under the cab that gives it all the power it needs to carry its heavy loads. Alright, it looks like we're down to our last piece of wood. And now we can retract the arm and take the attachment off. Let's take the wood to our job site for processing. Ah, here we are now. Like our hauler, this truck can raise its bed to easily dump what's on it. 
Our worker can take the wood and split it into usable lumber for houses and other construction projects. Wow, look at that. Back at the farm, our crop is ready for harvest. For that, we'll use our combine. The front of the combine is called the header. Let's lower the header so we can get to the crop. As the header spins, it collects the crop. And then the combine can separate the grains from the rest of the plant. Wow, look at what a great job our combine is doing collecting our grains. When the combine is done harvesting, the grain tank is full of grains. Which means it's time for the combine to deposit the grains in a storage container. To do that, we'll extend the grain auger. Inside the cylinder is a screw which pushes the grains along. Once it's done, we can retract the auger and close the storage bin. And our combine is ready to go after completing its job. And we can park it with some of our other tractors. I had so much fun making this video for you guys. If you did too, then please subscribe for more great content. Thanks everyone, see you next time!